Hi Capricorn, this is your astrology forecast for November 2015. Thank you for joining me, it's really nice to be with you. The month of November starts in a very kind of watery, emotional way for you. There's a grand trine in your chart which gives you a real talent, a real kind of insight into the relationships that you have in your life and the way you communicate. So you're going to come across in a very healing way, in a very positive way, and people will really respond very well to what you're saying to them. That increases on the 2nd of November because what happens is that Mercury goes into the watery sign of Scorpio in your 11th house. The 11th house represents your friendships and your connections with other people. So the month is really all about your connections with people, the way you share your ideas, you share your feelings towards them, and it really has a positive impact. So you're in a great place to be able to nurture people and to make new friendships and to make friendships better. On the 3rd of November, um, the Sun starts to trine Neptune and it does that until the 6th of November. Now Neptune is the planet of the dream, of the unmanifest, of the other side, of the veil, of the intuition and whenever the Sun, so your identity Capricorn, comes into contact with Neptune it increases your intuition and it increases the amount of messages that you're getting. So pretty much the whole first of the month is all about you getting intuitive messages, being really feeling really connected and being able to apply that to your relationships because you can communicate that so well. So it comes across very, very easily and very nicely. On the 4th of November, the moon starts to trine Uranus. Uranus is in your fourth house in Aries. Um, and that's pushing you to take action in your family life, to uh, create some chaos or to have something unexpected happen there. The moon is in um, Leo in your eighth house. So they connect and there's, there's, a, there's a kind of tendency for you to want to either show off in your family life or to do something to impress people, which is showing off. Um, or to take charge or to be the leader here in your relationship life. Um, and that kind of comes from a place of ego. So that's not particularly helpful. Rather than try and impress people, people in your family love you anyway, they're your family. So rather than waste your energy doing that, I would suggest using your intuitive abilities to kind of nurture people and help them and to say things which are actually can be of service. Okay, so I think the beginning of the month is about getting your head in the right place a little bit and focusing on the good stuff. On the 5th of November, Jupiter starts to square, uh, it starts to trine Pluto, which is in your first house in Capricorn. Okay, so first of all, Pluto is the planet of death and rebirth. Okay, it's about regeneration. Your rising sign is also in Capricorn there in your first house. So you're going to be feeling, Capricorn, like there's a new you being born at this time of the year. So I really think that um, you can see the potential of your future self. And you think you're going to realize that and reach that potential by educating yourself and by taking practical action to broaden your horizons. So that could mean that you, you are really, really into signing up for a course, a college degree, going on a pilgrimage or going on a gap year or you know going traveling in the world it can be it can be education and expansion on a physical level which is travel or on an intellectual level which is study um, and it can even be on a spiritual level by you know going to the ashram in India for a couple of months and meditating stuff like that but that's really what I think is going to feel very strong for you around the faith and the actual trine between Pluto and Jupiter, that's been in place from the 8th of September and it will continue until the 20th of November. So the, it's almost like, you know, the, the caterpillar coming out of its cocoon and becoming this butterfly and there's a feeling of something good happening in your life and there's a feeling of coming out could be that you come out, but it could be that you really put your finger on what your real identity is as well. Now, on the 7th of November, there's a Yod, and the Yod is also known as the finger of God. And that is between your Jupiter and your Sun, and it culminates in your 
um, Uranus in your fourth house. Okay, so again, there's a desire for you to really be the best version of yourself that you can be, and to take control of your hopes and dreams and what you're going to achieve with those. And really, for some reason, it all channels into your family again. You want to make your family. I think you want to either set the tone for your family or you want to be a leader. So whether you know you decided that your family you've got you've got a husband and two kids and you've decided you're not going to go to fast food restaurants anymore and you're all going to become vegan and you're driven and determined to do that. Now, usually that's a recipe for disaster because when you try and change other people, usually you come against a lot of resistance, but this is a yard. So it has a karmic influence. And remember, this whole month I've already said that you have the ability to really heal people through your communication, especially your family. So it may be that you're getting the intuitive message to help your family in some sense, whether it's to stop eating fast food or whether to start going to some sort of spiritual community or whether you're all going to take a holiday together or something like that where you change the dynamic of the family to make it more positive. It's actually very good because a yod means that you're getting the divine guidance to do that and the people in your family will benefit if you take those steps. On the 8th of November, this desire to work with family is going to come against some friction with your working life. It's going to, um, it's going to either be that um, you don't have the time to kind of work on family issues because you have to work and you're really interested in what you're doing work-wise. But really what I think is that you feel quite comfortable working it on your family. It's a tricky one because on one hand you feel this emerging of a new self coming through and you feel inspired and you feel very hopeful. But that doesn't mean that other people feel the same way, you know. And there's nothing more annoying than someone who's just gone through some sort of spiritual awakening and who comes home and says, right everyone, we're all going to, you know, pray for 10 hours a day. You know, it's really irritating. So just kind of use your common sense there. It's wonderful to make positive changes in your family, but if you're on some sort of fanatical drive to, to um, revolutionize everything, then just use some sort of self-awareness around that and see, am I acting reasonably or am I being a little bit over the top? Okay, Venus starts to move into your 10th house on the 9th of November and it goes into Libra. So the focus is now going to be moving away from family, I do feel that, and it is going to be shifting more towards what can I do in my working life to create something beautiful. So this is a really good time, this starts a really good time for you to um, excel at work, because Venus is the planet of love. When that is in your working sector, it means that, one, you love what it is you do, but you also have the ability to beautify things and to make them better and to, again, heal in some way. So that's the big theme I'm getting for you Capricorn, that when you apply yourself to situations, whether it's family relationships or work, you can really create something of quality that will be very helpful to others. Neptune trines the moon in Scorpio on the 10th of November. So you've got a lot going on in that um, 11th house here. You're really actively working on realizing your hopes and dreams and you're get, getting messages through that will get you there. So listen to your intuition, keep a dream journal by your bed because you will actively be getting things in that will inform you what steps to take. You know, The Secret was a great book, I guess, but it's it, it was so simplified and simplistic. If you think of a check, but, I mean, what the book says is, imagine a check and you'll get a check in the post, okay? I mean, you can imagine all you want, you're not going to get a check. You can imagine getting yourself a check, you can imagine yourself getting a check, rather, I should say. And what's going to happen next, these are the next steps that I think it missed out. The next steps are, is that you'll receive information that you need to take to actually realize that, and then to take that information and to put it into practice and to take action. That's how you're going to get that check. Okay, So you're going to be getting the information, listen to it, 
and put it into practice and you can realize your dreams and your work. Okay, on the 11th is the new moon. And the new moon is a period of setting intentions and setting goals. It's energy being pulled in. That further emphasizes this whole um, focus on what do I want to achieve in my working life. And the 11th is a great time to set goals for the future. Where do you want to be next month? Where do you want to be in a year in your working life? On the 12th of November, Jupiter starts to sextile the sun. And Mercury. So that's interesting. You may even get some guidance in terms of how you should educate yourself, whether you should go on a physical level to explore something or whether you should sign up for a course that will help you create even more beauty in your working life. So watch out for that on the 12th. You'll get some information about broadening your skill set. Mars moves into Libra on the 13th of November. And that's wonderful because Mars is the soldier, it's drive, it's power to succeed. And when he's in Libra, he works to create something really, again, beautiful, something of service, something that other people can enjoy. Mars and Venus, when they come together, they create new life. So the 13th is another amazing day when you'll see or you'll reach another milestone in creating this working success, this um, a hope and dream in terms of your working life coming true and really finding your path in becoming the new you, revitalizing your career, doing what it is you're meant to be doing. It's all clicking into a place and it's kind of a magical time for you Capricorn. On the 14th, four houses of your chart clear and they become completely empty and it's your 5th house, your 6th house, your 7th house and your 8th house. And the focus shifts more towards your career, yourself, your hopes and dreams, and your communication. What you're not interested in at the moment are relationships, what other people think, and even kind of just having fun and letting your hair down. You're really, really focused on getting things done. You're highly productive, and you're very in tune with your own desires for your life, and that's great. Because when you're that focused um, and you're focused on your own needs rather than what other people want for you, then you can really make a lot of progress and make that happen. On the 16th of November, Jupiter begins to trine your moon, your Pluto and your rising sign all in your first house. And this is the luckiest day for you because Jupiter is the lucky planet and it connects with everything that is a central to your personality and your identity. So everything I've mentioned so far, that kind of phoenix rising from the ashes, that new sense of identity emerging, that is super powered by that Jupiter connecting with it. And again, you'll get guidance to, to either take a course or to take a trip or to do something that will take you to the next level. Really listen out for that, especially on the 16th, because the messages will come in fast and, and furious. Uranus begins to oppose Venus in the 10th. Um, and Uranus kind of distracts you a little bit now, okay? Uranus comes in and it says, don't focus so much on work. Kind of go back to impressing family and really doing like major great things. Ignore Uranus, continue to build on your career success and to make positive inroads into that. That's what your priority is at the moment, okay? Uranus is kind of all by itself. They're just causing a little bit of chaos as he usually does. And it's important not to go with that. That opposition is there from the 17th of November until the 28th. So the latter half of the month, it's really important for you to keep the focus going and to keep saying, I really want to achieve my hopes and dreams and I'm not going to waste my time kind of, you know, splashing out for no reason because my family love me. So he kind of creates a little bit of insecurity there. On the 19th, the moon in your second house starts to square a lot of your energy that's going on in the 11th and 12th. And you're going to start to reevaluate some of the things that you've been focusing on and have wanted to achieve and the direction you're going in. 
And I really think that the focus is going to be very practical on the 19th. So for instance, if you've been focusing on, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be this big success and I'm going to, I'm going to start my own charity. Okay. And that's how I think I'm going to help other people. And that's what you've been working on. On the 19th, you'll get some information or you'll get some clarity and some insight which says, okay, you're running a charity, but how is this going to be financially viable? And the biggest lesson that comes in, that's kind of a ding eureka mo moment for you on the 19th is a practical kind of piece of information which has a financial impact on what you're trying to achieve, if you see what I mean. So you can certainly help people, but this is going to make it more within your reach because you're going to look at the finances and understand that you have to put certain things in place if you want it to work. The 21st sees Mercury going into Sagittarius. And that's all in your 12th house. You've got Saturn in Sagittarius in your 12th, you've got your Midheaven in Sagittarius in your 12th, and you've got Mercury in Sagittarius in your 12th. I really think that you're kind of driven to have this, to create something in your life that is really meaningful for other people. And I think you're divinely guided, and I think you're doing something that is going to be of service, and you're going to fulfill that through your work, and now you're going to be communicating that and hearing that very clearly. It's good that you have that reality check on the 19th, because that sort of purpose is very noble, but it can crash and burn if there's no groundedness to it, you know? So the guidance that comes in, that's wonderful and that you're looking at helping other people, but you still need to have both feet firmly planted on the ground that you can actually get these things done. And there's very little earth in the chart around this time of the month. So you have to focus and literally tick, you know, cross the T's and dot the I's because if you want this to take off whatever dream you're working on, you have to consider the practical implications, otherwise it won't work. Pluto begins to square Venus on the 22nd of November. And that's, again, great. I think the, the learning that you've done is going to renew your sense of passion and love for what it is you're trying to achieve in your working life. And it will give it another push, another boost into making it a reality. Really good. 23rd sees the moon connecting with your north node there and the north node is at the noon position in your chart so again for you Capricorn you're going to feel at this time of the month that you're you're totally doing what you're meant to be doing with your life and you're going to feel super lucky and supported in the practical actions that you're taking you're going to feel like you're going on the right path and you're going to feel inspired that you're moving in the right direction I, I feel and I see great enthusiasm, great passion and great life purpose for you on this day. And this isn't, I know I'm breaking this down into day to day, but the, the journey through this month is all about you having a, a long term vision and a goal. And certain days are better than others, but the 23rd, you're going to be completely inspired with what you're trying to achieve. The 25th is the full moon and the full moon is in Taurus in your fifth house of romance and relationship okay so that full moon uh, the full moon is always a culmination a coming to fruition and the new moon on the 11th was in Scorpio and this full moon is in Taurus both of those signs are about control Scorpio likes to control emotionally Taurus likes to control physical things money belongings and the fact that this full moon is in your relationship sector in Taurus. Kind of brings that thing under the microscope again, that there's a, there's a desire to kind of display your wealth and to display your goods um, and to show off a little bit. And no one's impressed by that, especially this month. Okay, So you might feel that this grates a little bit on you, but the way to, again, to, to use your energy wisely is not to... Well, I mean, if you want to have a party, if you want to throw a party and to show everyone what a wonderful house you live in and how fabulous your life is, then go for it. You've worked hard this month, fine. But it's not going to benefit you in any way apart from saying, yes, I'm the best. The way to benefit it 
is to continue to work and to continue to educate yourself and continue to take the action so that your future looks even better. But you know, I need to lighten up here with what I'm telling you because life isn't all work, is it? And if you want to have a break in between that and just have a day off to yourself and just have fun and show everyone how well you're doing, then yeah, go for it. Why not? <sighs> yeah, enjoy the full moon to have, that, have a little party or something. The 27th sees the North Node and connect with Jupiter. Yes, those two are moving closer and closer in your uh, ninth house up there of growth and taking actions to expand. And it squares your moon, and that moon is right underneath your descendant in Gemini. So communication on the 27th comes in via your everyday life, your routine, which gives you another way forward. Um, another piece of information comes in that gives you the next step, the next direction for how to improve your business in terms of how to live your life purpose and how to achieve what it is you want to achieve on planet Earth. Uranus opposes Mars on the 28th of November and stays in opposition with it until the 20th of December. The fight now is not only between Venus and Uranus, which is trying to pull you away from your work. Mars joins the fight against Uranus and really I think Mars and Venus start to win against Uranus now and they start to say you really have a lot of good that you can be creating in your working life don't get distracted with frivolous kind of things keep doing what it is you're meant to be doing um, and you have a real gift and a purpose and that's going to encourage you I think so keep Keep the focus clear around the end of the month. And then finally, on the 30th of November, the moon connects with all of your Sagittarius energy in the 12th house. This will be nice because, um, again, that kind of helping other people, that sense of spirituality, that vision of your future, that vision of a greater purpose for your life, that really comes into focus again. And it's, it, it gives you another boost, another bit, bit of encouragement. Um, and I think in a genuine way, you'll start to notice and to see that if you do this in a long-term way, you'll get the kind of social acclaim and recognition that you desire, and you don't need to kind of show off once in a while to get people to approve of you. The people who are going to love you in your life are going to love you whether you don't have a job and you're on benefits, or whether you're you know, the president of some company. It doesn't matter to them. And when you try and impress people, the, the ones who don't really care about you find they'll be impressed and they'll want to be nearer to you. But the people you have a genuine thing going on with, it's irrelevant to them. Okay, So it's great that you're trying to help and that you're trying to do something and, and that you're trying to become this new person. That's wonderful. But remember that it doesn't... It doesn't... Um, it doesn't alter who you are in any way, or your relationships. You're going to be you when you're 20 and a student, and you're still going to be you when you're 40 and a big shot. Same thing. Same person underneath. So um, that's what I see for you in November. I hope that's given you some insights. If you'd like a private reading with me, then please get in touch via the website. It's gregoryscott.com. Click on the readings tab, and you'll see the types of readings that I do. Astrology, tarot, and numerology. If you'd like any one of those readings, then just select it on the website. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, and I'll speak to you soon.